Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let me start off by thanking the employees of the IRS uh, that have been working around the clock to assist taxpayers during exceptionally challenging times over the last two years. And Commissioner Reddick, thank you for responding to my and my colleagues, including Senator Cassidy's bicameral bipartisan calls to suspend notices, allow employees to join surge teams and implement mandatory overtime at the IRS in order to work down the backlog. Right now, as I understand it, the IRS has two main issues when it comes to working down the backlog. And until we address these issues, we're going to have more of the same uh, next year. The first issue is staffing, some of that has been talked about here, and that we need more IRS employees. The second is that the IRS still relies on paper, and this paper needs to be open, sorted, and also manually entered into the IRS systems. Uh, it seems to me, Commissioner, one of the ways to decrease the backlog is to hire more customer service representatives or CSRs at the IRS, especially the submissions processors. Both the National Taxpayer Advocate and the National Treasury Employees Union have identified that these employees are making less than $37,000 a year and that, quote, this is competing with the fast food industry with high stress and unreasonable expectations. And this is why applicants, quote, are not beating a path to the IRS's doors. How many submissions processing CSRs is the IRS seeking to hire this year? And how many have you hired? Between this year, Between this year and next year, we expect to onboard 10,000. And we have more, before, before that hiring, we have more CSRs on board than we have ever had in the history. And normally, a lot of them come on board as seasonal. And a year ago, we extended them to permanent. And we brought on an additional thousand. About um, I'll get it wrong. So I you're looking to hire ten thousand. Ten thousand more. Ten, and and at this point, what do you have on board? All total. There's different categories for them. So okay. we have submission. So of this ten thousand that you're seeking to hire, is 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 that still to be filled? No, it's two five thousand tranches. And right. I talked about. I think you were here when I talked about the hiring events that we're having around the country. And we currently right. we've made offers for two thousand of that five thousand. We expect to fill that 5,000 shortly. We're having quite a bit of success in our okay. job fairs. Uh -oh, I look forward to hearing that. Let me talk about the second issue, which is paper. Uh, the IRS is stuck in the 1960s before the information age. Last year, IRS employees were expected to open the envelopes of over 21 million paper returns that were filed. They were expected to manually process the returns, like this one. This may be a simpler one. but. Uh, meaning that they had to enter in all of the numbers that a taxpayer writes on this form. Uh, this all takes time and is a reason why the IRS is a year behind on working down the backlog. Just how do we fix this? Uh, last week, the National Taxpayer Advocate issued a directive uh, that asked the IRS to work with the tax software industry to implement barcoding and scanning technology for next year's tax season. This would speed up processing of returns, reduce errors, would allow the IRS to reassign employees where they're needed the most, such as answering the phone. Commissioner, does the current budget request include funding to accommodate implementing barcodes and standing, scanning technology for next year's filing season? First, I would ask you to look. We will issue our response to that directive, and I would ask you to look at that, and we'll be available to discuss it with you in person. Second, I would say with respect to 2D barcoding, in our con congressional budget justification for each year, 2013 to 2017, we specifically requested, but did not receive, funding for 2D barcoding. And then third, the answer is yes. Does the, commission, does the president's budget provide for this? Uh, we absolutely need to do better. Absent a pandemic, we would have been in a lot better place with the paper, but we have to balance the, the same individuals answer phones and do the paper. And the phones, as you know, we received over 400% more calls than ever before. Right. Um, so, so, so the so, bottom line. But we are headed, and we have had pilots and run pilots, and you'll see this in our response, in this space. There are some technological problems associated with us using um, the 2D barcode, but we need to get there. Okay. And then lastly, on February 15, Senators Booker, Cortez, Masto, Padilla, and myself sent you a letter expressing concerns about how the IRS implemented facial recognition technology. In this letter, we expressed concerns about whether taxpayers, especially last-minute filers, like the millions of Americans who will be filing their taxes this weekend and next, would have a meaningful choice whether they wanted to use facial recognition or how their biometric data would be protected. 
Despite requesting a response on the letter by February of 20, uh, 25th, we received a response from the IRS yesterday in time for this hearing. And even though the IRS has allowed taxpayers to opt out of a video selfie and instead conduct a live chat with an ID me agent, I'm still concerned that taxpayers do not have a meaningful choice here as many have waited long times in trying to reach an agent. I'm also extremely concerned about the amount of information ID me collects and stores for every taxpayer that uses his website. As a matter of fact, as ID me tells me, according to this California disclosure in its notice for residents, it includes things like age, gender, military veteran status, taxpayers' location, and maybe their uh, uh, citizenship status, where they access the ID me website. Even though tax returns and tax identity information, including a taxpayer's name, address, and taxpayer ID number, are protected from disclosure or potential disclosure by the IR, IR Internal Revenue Code, the information disclosed in ID me is not protected. Uh, so uh, the congressional intent seems to me that was to prevent the erosion of trust in our tax system and encourage taxpayer compliance. So uh, I look forward to working with colleagues on both sides of the aisle that would update this outdated provision of the tax code. Mr. And Senator Menendez, those of us who consider ourselves privacy hawks very much agree with you. So I look forward to working with you and, uh, and with the commission. You're the ultimate privacy hawk, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, so I we look forward friend. to working with you. OK. 